<laughs> okay, welcome everybody to uh, the town meeting well meeting for December 1st, 2020. Uh, as you can see, we're still in the code red. We're all wearing masks and social distancing to the best of our abilities. Uh, we have a public hearing tonight, and we're going to move into that right away since we're in the right timeline. So we're going to move forward with that. So I need a motion to open the public hearing. So, move by. Councilor Gerard. Seconded by. Councilor Nadeau. Be it resolved that the Council of Town Nepal do not open this public hearing to hear representation to conditional use variation application CU B 02 2020 of Murray Parrott. All in favor? Sure. Okay, Murray's just going to step back. The bed will be at the back of the room so you can answer some questions. Does anybody have anything? Okay, Jeff, I think you're going to take us down what's going on. Sure, this is application B CU 02 2020. Owner and applicant is Murray Parrott. Uh, it's a two part proposal. First part is variation order uh, requested to allow the minimum site area be reduced from 20,000 square feet to 11,199.85 square feet for the new lot and 6,052.55 square feet for the residual. Uh, B is to allow for the minimum front setback to be decreased from 45 feet to 30 feet for the new lot and 19.2 feet for the residual lot and to reduce the minimum site width from 100 feet to 60 feet for the residual lot in a CH zone. And the second part is a conditional use requested to allow for the location of commercial, well, commercial or trade school in the highway commercial CH zone. And it's affecting uh, lot B, plan 56726, being 40 Stonehouse Street. And the reason of support is to satisfy subdivision requirements to sever 11,199.85 square foot parcel from the noted property. Okay, so we have, in the COVID world, we have nobody in the room, but we do have a phone line available, and I guess that never happened. Well, phone's been connected, and so far nobody has joined us, so I'm going to suggest that we go to the phone Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Or Murray, do you want to speak to it at all? Do you have anything you want to add? Or? Uh, well, the uh, physiotherapy clinic is operating, and uh, the operator will be the owner after the subdivision is completed. And the plan is to build a rural training center on the uh, remaining property, subject to the conditions. And, uh, you know, under the building codes now. Okay. Does anybody in council have any questions? So through the through the public notice, I did receive one question. They they had no no objections or no concerns to it, but they were just inquiring about uh, access to the property and frontages. And once I explained that frontage to the building and these properties would be off the newly built Stonehouse Street, and that would be considered a frontage and an access point, then. Uh, they're just looking for clarification, but they, they noted no concerns with it. So, okay. <clears throat> yes, Councilor Gerard. Have we made other similar variances as far as setbacks and stuff in that area for any other the buildings that are in that area recently, Jeff? Whether it be you know some of the commercials along in that area or uh, ooh, not really. Nothing new has been built there that I can recall. Um, in my time, at least off the top of my head, anyway. Uh, like in regarding the, the setback or the size of lots? Setbacks. Yeah, no, I, I don't recall anything. Uh, like the uh, the second one, the 19.2 feet for the residual lot, that's that's an existing building on there. Okay. And the new one is uh, is from 45 to 30 feet. So the new build would be essentially set back further than the the existing building that's sitting on that lawn, if, if that helps. Nope. Is this level, as you know, we, we talk about when we're doing these things that we keep things in line. <clears throat> so I, I just want to see how that, that plays through. Okay. In that, in my mind. So. Okay, any other questions? Okay, and we have that line open, and we've had no one call in, so I'm thinking we've given enough time for that to occur. 
So if there's nothing else, then I think I will go ahead and close this public hearing. So again, I need a motion moved by Councilor Pontiac, seconded by Councilor Pepo. Be resolved that we now do now adjourn the public hearing at 7:10 p.m. All in favor? Good. Thank you.
Um, sat in on that just to, and basically what that was is that was just to better train municipal staff about what has to happen as far as the ticketing processes if municipalities did want to get involved in that and as well as how the order works and what allows us to participate and uh, weighing in into the whole essential and non-essential list and uh, I mean, at this time, Lipua does not have a specific person designated, uh, even though we, we are in the program, uh, but I think it was, at that time it was discussed, it was a very complicated issue to weigh in on, and it's not something that, and it, we've looked to actively fill that role or that position, just at this time we currently have 3,300 inspectors in the province enforcing COVID regulations, and, didn't feel people one needed to like to participate in on that level. So, right, good to know. Uh, the next one uh, would be on the uh, intergovernment affairs and finance, and uh, we are starting the process uh, within the town of Nipua to look at changing logo on our putting signage up on the building. So we are currently reviewing. And we will look to make a decision and on that the first week of January. But that would be a look at adopting the potentially adopting the new logoing which we're seeing currently at the south end of Mountain today. Still keeping intact the land of plenty because we recognize that the land of plenty is in the Nipawa, that is the, the, the very meaning of our name. So we are in the process of reviewing that, and we will look to make a decision on that and uh, vote on that in the first week of January. Okay, thank you. So yeah, so if I understand that correctly, that, that means we would be moving away from our existing logo that had the cornucopia on it. Correct. But we would still be maintaining the land of plenty. Yes. And then just incorporating parts of the new. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have any comments on that? I'll prepare. <laughs> on that? Oh, no, you don't have anything? Uh, I'm not going to comment. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do have a report. <laughs> okay, thank you, Councilor Derek. Anybody else? Okay. <coughs> um, so I forgot to mention to this before, if you are, but. Um, so NEPA has been getting a lot of exposure. We're under the radar of the government. We're under the radar of a lot of other municipalities in the area for what's happening here. And so um, the other day, I was in a council chambers in another municipality being asked about questions about stuff we're doing here, about um, building stuff, uh, all, all kinds of questions that jumped in and out of Council jumped in and out of Fremont Health, jumped in and out of my personal building life and all that. So as a result, uh, I think it's going to be Thursday. We're going to be touring uh, three locations, uh, in, one in Mendoza, one at uh, like Celtic Power Manufacturing, and they want to look at evergreen technology. So that perhaps that's something that you could join us with. Yeah. I don't know if in that. But they were, you know, they're quite quite interested in a lot of the aspects of, of how we function. And one of the things I was able to say is that uh, our staff are really good at, at talking to us about long-range plans and having long-range plans of their own, looking 20 years down the road, not just today. Opportunities have been coming into NEPA that have been fantastic, but they're being looked at through a lens of, okay, so what it, what's going to be 20 years down the road? If we do this today, is that going to stop tomorrow? So our staff have been really good at looking at everything we're doing with a view to the future. That's more important. Okay, good. Thank you. Any questions? Any comments? Okay. Let's be very ahead of it. Feel my post, so I thought I better go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yes, so. Uh, Along with uh, emergency services or community services, uh, we've got uh, uh, Connect, Connect NEPWA. This is uh, connecting with the Municipal Emergency Communication System. 
so it's connecting our community one message at a time. We are proud to announce the launch of a brand new communication system to the town of Nikwa, uh, which Nikwa Connect. The system will keep you informed on the latest news and events and innovation from our community and emergency updates with uh, alert options that include to uh, voice uh, uh, through the phone, text message, email, so social media. And the system is already is also linked up with Canada's national emergency alerting system. So that was one. So everyone sign up today. And the uh, second one I have is uh, is the new 211. This is uh, if you need help but don't know where to turn. This is uh, this is Manitoba on your on your phone. You can dial 211 or visit or visit Manitoba mb.211.ca. It's 24 7, 24 hour, 7 day a week service. 211 connects to community resources and services anywhere in Manitoba. It's uh, for mental health support. Home health care for aging parents, domestic violence, shelters, addiction treatments, etc. So uh, definitely if you want to uh, visit that site. And again, that's uh, 211. Okay, thank you, Brian. Any questions or comments? Okay, I guess we're going to move forward to the department reports. We've got the manager operations here tonight. Me. Thank you, Mayor McGuess. Uh, I'll just give you a quick update on some of the projects around town. Uh, some of you may have noticed that the CN site still has continued work going on it. Uh, we're still prepping this site for uh, Hydro Become, doing some final landscaping just to ensure that all grades are working well with their final uh, plans of the wires and also the street bowlers and everything else that have to go play. Cemetery still seeing ongoing work. We're doing a few removals of some more trees. And as of yesterday, uh, we did finally receive our load of culvert in so that we will put the culverts into the brand new dikes we constructed during the flood process so we can get those in place and drain the water out of them during our spring runoff now. But in other news, uh, we have disappointing news to share with the community is that we ended up losing one of our devoted employees last week, uh, Mr. Dwayne Crandall, who uh, Passed away suddenly on us. Dwayne uh, was a 20 year veteran for the town of Nipua. He started here quite a long time ago. And he was, it was his, would have been his anniversary this year for his years of service. He was the uh, first one to show up at the shop and pretty much the last one to leave. And like anything else, first one in the machine, last one out. Like, quite a devoted employee. It'll be greatly missed. Not only is the employee, but the friend he was to all of us. So, staff are coping and slowly moving on, but it'll be dearly missed. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I've only been part of this council for two years. I'm going to my third year, but and I didn't know Dwayne. I have to admit, before I started here, but it's, I'm absolutely amazed and astounded by uh, how many people's lives he cut across. Like it's uh, it's unbelievable how many people have, yeah, have even come and talked to me and said, oh, you know, you did this for me or this or anything. And it goes back 20 years. It goes back to when he was in high school. But it's pretty amazing. And I know, as you said, inside the town, I mean, he was a, he was just a tremendous employee. He was always there, always available, always. Anything needed to be done, and then he'd be hard to have to pick up the phone, and he was there. So yeah, no, he will be greatly missed. And uh, I mean, we live in a world now with, with, you know, where funerals can't be done like before COVID. So it's unfortunate, but I think uh, the outpouring that the, that the community has put on Facebook and just in general has been has been extremely gratifying. And I would think that any part of the family that he has around him must be extremely appreciative. <coughs> Okay, we are going to move uh, into our uh, interim operating budget resolution. And I was wondering, Colleen, can you just tell the viewing audience maybe especially what that is? Uh, so every year before we get to January of the next year, we have to pass the ability to, uh, it's a spending authority basically because our 
current budget is actually finished by the end of December 31st, so we have to give ourselves authority to spend basically for the months of January through April of the next year. So we take a look at the budget expansion years we've had in the previous year, and then just portion it to what we would need to spend for those five months. Okay, good, thank you. So if there's no questions, we'll move forward with that resolution. So I'll move by. Councilor Gerard. Second by. Deputy Mayor Head. Okay, call I just want to make sure I read all the numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So be it resolved that in accordance with section 163 of the municipal act, the council of town Nepo has made provisional estimates of operating and capital expenditures of the municipality for the period from January 1st, 2021 until the adoption of the annual estimates. Now, therefore, be it resolved that these provisional estimates be hereby adopted. General government services, $410,000. Protective services, $300,000. Transportation services, $396,950. Environmental health services, $172,000. Environmental development services, $20,000. Public health and welfare services, $194,700. Economic development services, $80,405. Recreation and Cultural Services, $120,000. Fiscal Services, $85,180 for a grand total of $1,779,235. Total Utility Operating Requirements, $600,000. General Capital Requirements, $415,000. And Utility Capital Requirements, $400,000. Okay. So, that was raised in favor of that. Okay, October financial statements. I don't know if anybody here has had a chance to review them. Everybody's comfortable with what's there. I move forward with a motion on that. Moved by Councilor Kalsenchak. Seconded by Councilor Doe. Be resolved that we approve the financial statement for the month ending October 31st, 2020. All in favor? Fair. Okay, and then we're going to move forward with the accounts for November 2020. Again, moved by Mr. Pundle. Seconded by Deputy Mary Henley. Be it resolved that we approve the accounts for November 2020, totaling $754,359.06 as reviewed and representing check 2020022314 to 2020022479. But excluding 2020022378 and 2020002465. All in favor? Okay. Okay. Councilor Dart, and then the the complex. And we're going to move forward with the accounts on the two checks for uh, November off and home party. So, move by. Councilor Parrott, seconded by Councilor Bill. Be it resolved that we approve check number 2020002378 and 2020002479 for November 2020 for home hardware and Nepo Blast on Quap, totaling $3,515.62. All in favor? Fair. one in a year. Um, so we need actually uh, to name people to this because we will actually get cards that will be specific to allowing us whatever role we would give them. So we're asking that our director of finance be named for payment data entry and that the chairman of finance, Daryl Gerard, and myself be named for the authorization on payment. Only one will be required, but uh, it provides an audit in the security system for it. There's no, no funny business going on. Okay, it seems pretty straightforward. I think we can move forward with that motion. Moved by. Be it resolved that the following individuals be granted authority to approve online banking transactions. Director of Finance, Jamie Davey, for payment data, data entry. CEO, Colleen Chinchishan, as Chairman of Finance, Daryl Gerard, payment authorization. All in favor? Okay, outstanding utility accounts. 
So once again, you've done this a few times this year. We did a hearing on December 31st. We want to make sure that we clean up all outstanding accounts. So those that are unpaid in utilities and accounts receivable, we're asking that we get to add those to taxes under the authority of the municipal. Okay, again, too straightforward. I don't have to read all of them. No. No, okay. All right, so again, moving forward with the motion. Moved by Dr. Kostinchuk. Second by Council Pebble. Whereas Section 2522 of the Municipal Act authorizes the municipality to collect debts in the same manner as a tax may be collected or enforced under the Act, and whereas there they, they are outstanding utilities and accounts receivable charges which remain unpaid and not collectible, Therefore, be it resolved, the Council of Town will approve the addition of the following unpaid and outstanding utility in the amount of $9,878.82 and accounts receivable charges totaling $592.55 to the tax rolls as follows. All in favor? Very good. Okay. Conditional use variation application. Oh, I'm prepared. Is that going to be yours? Yep. Okay, so this is from the public hearing, correct? So, if there's any more questions or comments, otherwise, we're going to move forward with this resolution. Okay, so move by. Be it resolved that in order to provide the location of a commercial portrait for the location of a commercial trade school in a highway commercial CH zone on lot B, line 56726 at 40 Stonehouse Street, as requested under conditional use variation application CU B 02 2020 of Murray Parrot, be approved the following. The minimum site area to be reduced from 20,000 square feet to 11,199.85 square feet for the new lot and 6,000. 52.55 square feet for the residential lot. The minimum front setback to be decreased from 45 to 30 feet for the new lot and to 19.2 feet for the residential lot and a reduction, resi residual, residual. Well, I'm that. I'm that one. <laughs> for the residual lot and a reduction to the minimum site width from 100 feet to 60 feet for the residual lot and the CH zone. All in favor. Okay. Put the spin on that out. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I guess that's a pretty quick meeting today. We didn't have a lot to, oh yes, no council of Paris, sorry. <laughs> you can't have a residential lot. <laughs> oh, <that's right. laughs> oh I, need, I need to circle that word. <laughs> um, does anybody have anything else they want to talk about before we move forward with the adjournment? Um. That was kind of tough times right now. I'm going to go right from middle of the struggling, but I mean, it's just difficult with the with the, what we're in right now. So I think we just have to kind of plow ahead and carry on and hope for better days here at some point. Um, I guess yes, Council Dart. We could talk to the fact that you know, even though there are, we are fortunate to have a number of businesses that are open on Main Street, we do have a number of businesses on Main Street who aren't able to operate today under new uh, COVID rules and restrictions and. I just encourage you to, to reach out to those business owners. We, we all know them. We, you know, when we, we were there and we we're looking for support for community uh, fundraisers and organizations, they've been there when, when the flooding occurred back in you know, June and July. All of them stepped up and they, they donated to, to make sure that no one was left behind. I, I'd ask that you know, all the residents of Nipawa, when, when they're thinking this month about what we can do, uh, I think it's to, to remember to that, you know, it's, these are these are not anonymous people. We know who they are. We see them on the streets every day. We take that opportunity to reach out and, and connect in some way, whether it be just even personally to make sure that you, they know you're thinking of them, but also financially. Let's let's take this opportunity to do the support that we can do. Uh, it's not impossible. It is more difficult in today's world, but it isn't impossible. And I would challenge every resident of Nipawa to try to, to make that effort to, to go that extra mile for their neighbors and, and their, those, those local community supporters that have been there every day. Okay, thank you, Daryl. That was a great comment.
Okay. Is there something else? I guess we'll move forward to the adjournment. Oh, move by. Yeah, I will move you to please out of there. Council of Public, sorry. Second by the Council of Public. Be resolved. The Council of Town Meeting Board is not adjourned to the Virginia Council at 7 